cosmic rays hit space age high because of solar minimum, that's to blame, space weather today, and we also have 32 fireballs incoming towards Earth. This is from Space Weather and NASA. Cosmic rays are nearing a space age high. Ten years ago, NASA reported a perfect storm of cosmic rays during the year 2009. Radiation peppered Earth from deep space, reaching a 50-year high, registering levels never before seen during the space age. Well, that is about to happen again, and that's because of our solar minimum. Ground-based neutron monitors and high-altitude cosmic ray balloons are registering a new increase in cosmic rays. The Ulu Meteor Neutron Monitor in Finland, which has been making measurements since 1964, reports levels in April 2019 only percentage points below the space age maximum of 2009. The cosmic rays on Earth since 1964, shown here in the Ulu Neutron Monitor, the space age maximum of 2009 was around 5%, and that's where it has peaked to again today. So what's going on? The answer is, it's the solar minimum. During the low phase of the 11-year cycle, the sun's magnetic field and solar wind weaken. Cosmic rays, therefore, find it easier to penetrate the inner solar system. In 2009, the sun experienced the deepest solar minimum in a century. Cosmic rays reaching Earth naturally surged. Ten years later, and that's today, solar minimum is back renewing weakening of the sun's magnetic field and the solar wind. And again, it's another perfect storm. The panel of experts led by NOAA and NASA uh, just recently predicted that the current minimum would reach a nadir in late 2019 or 20, likely matching the record-setting minimum of 2009. And if they're right, cosmic rays will continue to increase with a new record possible in the near future. Cosmic rays cause the air showers of secondary particles when they hit Earth's atmosphere. So this is what neutron monitors and cosmic ray balloons are measuring. The secondary spray of cosmic rays that rains down on Earth. This spray is of special interest to air travelers because they are exposed to radiation. Secondary cosmic rays penetrate the hulls of the commercial aircraft, dosing passengers with the whole body, equivalent of dental x-ray even on ordinary mid-latitude flights across the United States. International travelers receive even greater doses. The International Commission on Radiology Protection has classified pilots as occupational radiation workers because of accumulated cosmic ray doses they receive while flying. That's why so many pilots and uh, stewardesses and stewards have um, developed, uh, in many cases, cancer. Now, moreover, a recent study by researchers at Harvard School of Public Health shows that flight attendants face an elevated risk of Cancer compared to members of the general population, they listed cosmic rays as one of the several risk factors. Now, space weather, solar wind incoming, a southern hole in the sun's atmosphere is spewing a stream of solar wind towards Earth. Minor geomagnetic storms are possible with the gaseous material arriving today or tomorrow, April 24th, 25th. NASA Stereo, a spacecraft already encountered the solar wind stream and measured its velocity, and that's between 500 and 600 kilometers per second. Polar auroras, that is northern lights, may be seen despite waning full moon. Also, we have a fireball network showing that uh, we've got a reported 32 fireballs, 19 sporadics, and 13 April lyrids every night 
a network of NASA All Sky cameras scan the skies above the United States for meteoritic fireballs. Automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environmental Office calculates their orbits, their speed, their penetrating depth into Earth's atmosphere, and many other characteristics, and daily results are presented on here on uh, Space Weather. Solar wind flowing from coronal hole could reach Earth's magnetic field April 24th, 25th, causing polar geomagnetic unrest. This is according to SDA, NASA, the coronal holes April 24th, 2019. Interplanetary magnetic field, B total 4.5 NT. And uh, the solar wind is at 359 0.5 kilometers per second, density 20.4 protons per square centimeter. X-ray solar flares? No. 6-hour max A7 and 24-hour A7. The solar flare explanations? Solar flares classified according to their X-ray brightness in the wavelength, ranging 1 to 8 angstroms. Three categories. The X-flares are big. They're major events that can trigger planet-wide radio blackouts and long-lasting radiation. M-class flares are medium-sized. They can cause brief radio blackouts that affect Earth's polar regions. And minor radiation storms sometimes follow M-class flares. Compared to X and M class events, C class flares are small with few noticeable consequences to Earth. And now there's the solar minimum is here. But even now, strangely beautiful auroras are seen dancing around the poles inside the Arctic Circle, for example. The guides, uh, you can see the uh, Northern Lights will be above the Great Lakes. There, of course, all of, the, all of Canada and Quebec will be able to see it. Quebec is part of Canada, of course. I used to say Quebec because I used to live there. <laughs> all right. Uh, and I have seen the Northern Lights. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, they're like a shivering colored curtain above our heads. They seem to be quite close to our hair, actually, but um, with absolutely no sound. And I saw it at night, and it was winter time, and it was absolutely, it was a Friday night, I remember, absolutely beautiful. So the um, cosmic rays are increasing. The graphs show that uh, the Ranegar Fodser maximum, which lies about 67,000 feet above central California, when cosmic rays crash into Earth's atmosphere, they produce a spray of secondary particles that's most intense at the entrance to the stratosphere. And physicists Eric Rediger and George Potzer discovered the maximum using balloons in the 1930s. And that's what we measure today. En route to the stratosphere, sensors also pass through aviation latitudes. And the, they figure and they measure the dose rates expressed as multiples of sea level. For instance, we see that boarding a plane that flies at 25,000 feet exposes passengers to a dose rates 10 times higher than at sea level, whereas at 40,000 feet, the multiplier is close to 50,000 times that of sea level. So the higher you go and the more time you are uh, there up in the air, the more radiation you get exposed to. Why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as coronal mass ejections, CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass by Earth. During solar maximum, as, as CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field which helps protect us from deep space radiation. The field, not the weakening of it, that is.
Space weather balloon data finds that approximately once a week, space weather students of Sky Calculus fly space weather balloons to the stratosphere over California. The balloons, equipped with radiation sensors, detect cosmic rays. A surprising down-to-earth form of weather, space weather, but cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger out lightning, and penetrate commercial airplanes. Also, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and even sudden cardiac death in the general population. Our latest measurements, though, also show that cosmic rays are intensifying with an increase of more than 18% since 2015. 18%, that's almost 20%, for example, a fifth, a fifth more. The data points uh, correspond to peaks of the uh, ranger fosser maximum, as we said, when cosmic rays crash into the Earth's atmosphere, they produce spray of secondary particles, most intense at the entrance of the stratosphere. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.